Next up, we have Lindsey Jensen and Josh uh, May Mabel. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, I want to start with a quote by an educator who I adore, Paulo Freire. He said, education either functions as an instrument which is used to facilitate integration of the younger generation into the logic of the present system and bring about conformity. Or it can be the practice of freedom by means of which men and women deal creatively and critically with the reality and discover how to participate in the transformation of their world. My name is Josh Mibus and I am your neighbor from Phoenix, Arizona. Teaching immigration to students and communities and teaching immigrants in our community is what the American public school system is about. A cornerstone in the American project that provides students with crucial exposure to people of different backgrounds and perspectives. We have a closer relationship with the American public school system than with any other shared institution. Teaching immigration, teaching immigrants, Teaching the next generation, we realize our education system is a powerful tool and an instrument to effectively support students and families to integrate into the powerful American dream and democracy. Zaretta Hammond, she's the author of Culturally Responsive Teaching and the Brain, explains that our brains are wired and favor a communal view in our world. Humans have always sought to be in a community with each other because it enhances our chances of survival. Over time, our brains become hardwired towards thinking and living cooperatively. And as we move away from that idea, we become less communal, more individualistic, and in my opinion, quite frankly, weaker. Yep. Hammond goes on to share four core areas of culturally responsive teaching, awareness, learning partnerships, information processing, and community building. In awareness, Every culturally responsive teacher develops a socio-political consciousness and understanding that we live in a racialized society that gives unearned privilege to some while others experience unearned disadvantage because of race, gender, class, or language. Teachers are aware of their role that schools play in both perpetuating and challenging those inequities. Learning partnerships. Culturally responsive teachers take the advantage of the fact that our brains are wired for connection. And as we move through the work, we build the capacity to establish authentic connections with our students. Information processing. Culturally responsive teachers are the conduit that helps students process what they are experiencing and learning. And community building. Culturally responsive teachers try to create an environment that communicates care, support, and belonging in ways that students can recognize. Mexican-American activist Cesar Chavez once said, preservation of one's own culture does not require contempt or disrespect for other cultures. We do an activity in class. I teach elementary physical education and I have students pair up with a partner and they sit down toe-to-toe, -to -toe, locked hand-in-hand. -hand. The challenge is to support each other to stand up, using each other to balance and rise equally. Hammond continues to share how we often talk about the problem of achievement gaps in terms of race, racial relations, issues of oppression and equality, why ironically the solutions for students, for closing students' learning gaps in the classroom lie in just tapping to their culture. The way we get students to open up to us is to show how we authentically care about who they are, what they have to say, and how they feel, and strategically and balancing collectively help each other up. I have the privilege to teach physical education in an urban 100% Title I elementary school with a wide range of ethnicities, cultures, backgrounds, and languages. This week we did an activity with our brand new rock wall. They were to climb the wall, turn around, and have a partner toss a ball to them, which they had to catch with one hand. Toss it back, and their partner had to catch it. They turned around and switched hands and did it with their left. I had a little boy from Guatemala, speaks a little bit of English, and he was paired up with a little girl from Tanzania, who also speaks a little bit of English. 
standing back and watching these two collectively work together and try and problem solve without any language spoken. The smiles of achievements, the distraught of failure, but all in all, achieving. I have students whose families have sought refuge from countries in Africa and the Middle East and families who have fled their homes from South, Central, and North America countries in search for safety and a better life. I teach first, second, and third generation students who simply just strive to better themselves and those around them. My vision as their teacher is to provide my students, like my two third graders, with physical skills and social tools to become in lifelong active learners and to allow them to enjoy the pursuit of what is possible. I feel so lucky to be their teacher. I feel fortunate that I get to learn who they are and be a mentor, be a role model, and show them opportunities and show them how together becoming contributing citizens in communities. Thank you El Paso for hosting this event. Thank you for the leaders and citizens of this powerful and influential city for standing up for what is right and what is humane and giving all of us teachers across the country the strength and motivation to join as one voice and unite on the right side of history.